My name is Vadim Krasnolke, Media Center, Ukraine. Greetings to all journalists who join us in an effort to share the truth about the most outst outstanding events in Ukraine. Today we will be talking about Poltava Oblast. We have Dmitry Lunin, head of Poltava Oblast Military State Administration. Welcome, Dmitry. Welcome. Yesterday and the day before, Poltava sustained probably the biggest attack um, in three months, the war period. There were 12 uh, bombings in uh, Kremenchuk. Two were destroyed by our um, air defense units. Kremenchuk power plant unfortunately was damaged. Uh, luckily, Nobody was wounded, or injured, or died, but the damage caused to our infrastructure is huge. We sustained another attack last month in April, and we haven't managed to resume to uh, the operations of the infrastructural objects that were damaged back then. And 170,000 people of Kremenchu who were receiving the heat supply from this power plant, uh, unfortunately, were made to freeze because uh, they couldn't get heat. We know that uh, Kremenchu um, oil refinery was also damaged uh, because of the bombing and uh, it didn't work. Did it make any sense to attack it again? Do you think that they were probably targeting any other object but uh, um, decided to attack it again? No, these are very precise, high precision weapon and they targeted this very infrastructural facility. I can assure you. Speaking of the Russian Federation, we cannot see logic or sense in many things they do. I believe all they do in Ukraine makes no sense at all. And it's difficult to find any logic in those attacks, in those rocket strikes. So the only thing uh, they do, they, they just keep destroying the remains of the industrial facility that is no longer in operation. I understand. Good news is that uh, people did not suffer, so nobody got injured. Poltava is now the forepost between Kharkiv and Donbass, and uh, these are the two places with the most active hostilities. So could you Give us an update uh, how Oblast lives uh, in such conditions. We are a humanitarian hub for Sumshchana, Donetschana, Luhanschana. We have uh, 200,000 refugees officially registered in our region. Our main objective is to help Sumy and Kharkiv region with humanitarian assistance, uh, hundreds of tons, hundreds of thousands of tons of humanitarian relief arrived in uh, Poltava region. We pack uh, uh, food um, and we deliver it to um, the refugees. 75% of refugees who now live in Poltava region are from Kharkiv and Kharkiv region. So our main objective is to render support to those regions that suffer from the most active hostilities. What are the recent trends? Uh, do you think that Har people from Kharkiv uh, uh, had uh, for home? Or is there evacuation from Donbass? There is no mass evacuation from Donbass. Unfortunately, people from Kharkiv remain in Poltava region. They don't want to go home yet. We know that our armed forces of Ukraine are already succeeding in the north of Kharkiv, but people are still cautious about going home. Amongst other things, uh, we provide medical assistance to a lot of military who arrive from the south of our country and Kharkiv region. So we provide medical assistance to our military in our hospitals and medical facilities. Being so close to active hostilities, how does it affect your daily life and routine? I mean, uh, Poltava region's daily life and routine. 
you probably know that the situation is more or less stable here. Uh, people are getting used to living in such conditions. They are near the front line. They keep living their lives. They keep working, uh, uh, providing services. Um, retail uh, businesses keep working. So people keep receiving the services they are used to. But nevertheless, uh, air raid alarms keep reminding us that um, the war is going on. You know that there were attacks on Karlivka and Kremenchuk last week. Uh, so it keeps reminding us that the war is going on and we should not become complacent. We should not ignore air raid warnings and we should be cautious and careful. I understand that we need to keep living, but we should not be complacent, as you put it. How do you rebuild the Poltava region after the attacks? How are you trying to rebuild? Um, we didn't have active hostilities in our region. There were some in the north. Um, the Russian troops were trying to enter some of our communities. They ruined the bridges. We ruined the bridges, I apologize, uh, so that we can stop the forwarding of Russian troops so that they couldn't attack uh, the south of Sumy region and the north of Poltava region. You probably know about the Hadjach Safari. So that's a local, um, let's say, inside joke. Uh, our law enforcement were trying to confiscate the tanks and the machinery of the Russian troops, and they were kicking them out of there. Unfortunately, we haven't managed to rebuild a lot because rebuilding bridges, it's... Um, expensive and time-consuming work. So we are now assessing the damage, the scope of damage. Uh, our most important thing is that we can provide hot water and heat to the buildings of um, and homes of our uh, people. Because we cannot be sure that uh, situation will not repeat. As we already said, that it doesn't make any sense to bombard the facility that is already destroyed, but uh, where are we looking for logic for? Speaking of Poltava infrastructure, I know that uh, some roads uh, were damaged and destroyed, but um, other infrastructural objects are intact. Yes, we can put it that way. So our infrastructure hasn't suffered, luckily. There were some damages caused to our airport, uh, and there were some uh, strikes uh, in um, Poltavshina region, uh, one farm was ruined. A few infrastructural objects of minor importance were ruined, but they will be rebuilt soon. Let's talk about the economic situation in the region, agrarian situation. Um, have you started sowing campaign? Are you in the middle of it? No, we are actually on final stages of our sowing campaign. Um, 1,200 hectares have already been cultivated and uh, um, altogether our objective was uh, 1,400 uh, uh, hectares. Unfortunately, a lot of damage was caused to our economy and it's very difficult uh, to work in such conditions because we have shortage of fuel. But speaking of other sectors of industry, such as retail, trade, commerce. So things are more or less um, good, satisfactory, because there are lots of refugees living in our region and they are using the services. Speaking of the budget, uh, for the first time in four months, we have positive figures in the budget. Not in all communities, territorial communities, unfortunately. We have... Um, a lot of um, natural resources and um, uh, businesses related to, uh, to natural resources. And those industries that are working in that sector, so they are doing pretty well and the budget of, this, of those communities is quite balanced. In other communities, um, we made 60% um, of our revenues uh, 
but the situation is more or less stable. We should not be complaining if we compare our situation with other regions of Ukraine. Unfortunately, heavy industry is not doing as well because uh, the chain supplies have been uh, disrupted. Speaking of agricultural sector, a lot of um, produce remains in our um, stocks. Um, we were planning to sell it to other countries, so, but um, unfortunately this, these products are sitting in our warehouses. In a nutshell, the situation is under control and I believe that we will not be suffering from starvation, so that's for sure. So that's good news that the economics is good, it's up and running, and uh, the situation is under control. Do we have questions? Recently, Russia hit... Um, oil refinery in Kremenchuk. Actually, there were a few rocket strikes that were delivered recently, and uh, this facility is not working at the moment. What is uh, the volume of um, the trade done by this oil refinery um, in relation to the market figures of Ukraine? And I understand that this is the crisis situation. 20 to 30 percent of um, fuel so that was what our refinery provided before the war but we also uh, have issues with ports that they are not working and uh, as we said uh, supply chains were disrupted and there are logistical issues and uh, we are short of fuel So some of the economy, economy sectors were ruined, but the biggest situation, the biggest problem is about the ports, that the ports are not functioning. If we have no more questions, then uh, we will be saying thank you to our guest. Thank you, Dmitro, for being with us, and thank you for doing what you are doing for Poltava region and uh, Ukraine. Let me just remind you that our guest was Dmitro Lunin, head of Poltava Oblast Military Ad State Administration, and my name is Vadim Kuhn.